Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the April 2022 CTSS quiz. April, spring is in the air. It's Easter, it's passed over, it's going to be a great month. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's look at these 10 wonderful cases. In this patient with a gastronoma, what's the most likely diagnosis? Well, if you ignore the choices and just look at the images, you see marked thickening of the stomach with multiple masses that are enhancing in the stomach. That's pretty impressive. Look at all of those masses. That's simply not gastric polyps. Polyps do not enhance, typically. Lymphoma gives you mass-like infiltration, but not multiple polypoid lesions, and they too would not be enhancing. And gastric adenocarcinoma can be infiltrative, can have polypoid lesions, but not to this extent. And also, gastric adenocarcinoma is typically hypovascular. What you're looking at here are multiple neuroendocrine tumors. These were hundreds of carcinoid tumors on biopsy. Classic presentation, carcinoid tumors, MEN1 gastronoma. Just a wonderful case. The most likely diagnosis in this 30-ish year old female is there's a very large pancreatic mass. It's cystic and solid. It displaces vessels. It doesn't have the look of adenocarcinoma. It doesn't have ductal obstruction. It's too large, you can almost say. But of course, I didn't even give you that as a choice. Mucidous cystic neoplasms arise in the body, can grow toward the head. They're usually cystic, though if they had malignancy, they could be more solid looking. So I guess that's a thought. This is surely not an IPMN. If it was an IPMN, it would be cancer in an IPMN. It's not a serous cystadenoma. You might think about it because of the cystic component, and sometimes serous or cystic and solid. But it's a female. It's kind of youngish. Cystic and solid. You better think about a spend tumor. Solid and papillary epithelial neoplasm is the correct answer. I will admit, if I was being pushed hard in a differential, MCN with malignant degeneration would be up there in the differential diagnosis. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with hepatitis C is, well, when you say to me hepatitis C, I'm always thinking hepatoma, not even looking at the images. If you look at the images on the arterial phase and then the MIP imaging, there's about a two and a half to three centimeter vascular lesion with neovascularity in the lateral aspect of the left lobe of the liver. There's underlying cirrhosis present. This is not FNH. FNH can have a feeding vessel, but you're thinking cirrhosis, you ain't thinking FNH. Hemangioma, this is not the puddling pattern of hemangioma. Again, hemangiomas typically will collapse in the face of cirrhosis. Hepatic adenomas are a possibility only in the sense that hepatic adenomas can eventually become hepatomas, but also I don't think about hepatic adenomas when I'm in a cirrhotic liver. When I have a patient with hepatitis C and I have cirrhosis, it's going to be hepatoma. And this, in fact, was a primary hepatocellular carcinoma. The least likely diagnosis in this case. Wow, look at the size of this mass. At first glance, it's almost hard to recognize this is the kidney. You're seeing the arteries stretch. There's solid and cystic components, some vascularity. Now, this could be a chromophobe renal cell, though it's pretty large. But interestingly, this was a chromophobe, and I show this case in an example how variable chromophobe lesions are. It could be a clear cell, renal cell, though what's atypical about it is clear cells typically are more vascular, but aggressive looking lesions, clear cell is the top of my list. Papillary is the thought. It's a little bit large, but papillary can be large occasionally. The one thing this is not is a Bosniak 2F cyst. It's not a cyst we are worrying about simply following it. This is a malignancy. The only question is what is it? So the least like, likely diagnosis is Bosniak 2F cyst. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with increasing shortness of breath is, well, the patient's intubated. There's nodes in the mediastinum, and there's extensive disease in the upper lung zone, cystic spaces, interstitial changes. Now, I have to admit, you're not seeing the lower lung fields, and you would ask me, is this process involving the entire lungs? 
Is it upper lung predominance? What else is going on? Well, this is not the look of asbestosis. You don't see any pleural disease anyway. TB usually is asymmetric, but TB you could think about. Wegner's shows narrowing of the airway, can show areas of cavitation, can show nodules, but it doesn't have this look. This is more the look of end-stage lung disease with cystic spaces and interstitial change. What this is more likely is going to be sarcoidosis. Patients with end-stage sarcoid get these cystic changes, the interstitial changes, and the adenopathy. So end-stage sarcoid was the correct diagnosis. The best diagnosis in this patient with weight loss and elevated CA-19-9 is, obviously I'm trying to trick you into saying pancreatic adenocarcinoma. There in fact is a low density zone in the body of the pancreas, and you're thinking about cancer. I sure am thinking about cancer also, but I don't see a pancreatic duct that's dilated. That makes me think it can't be adenocarcinoma in all likelihood. Then you look at the halo around the pancreatic gland, particularly well seen on both the axial and coronal views. So that possibility is indeed something I would think about. And then I'm thinking about autoimmune pancreatitis. Lymphoma, typically a solid infiltration. Necrotizing pancreatitis is inflammatory change. And you could think about pancreatitis here, but it's not a necrotizing pattern. The halo pattern, everything that you see in this case really makes me think about autoimmune pancreatitis. And the fact I told you the patient had elevated CA-19-9, which always makes you think about malignancy, you also have to remember patients with autoimmune pancreatitis, and that's one of the challenges. They have symptoms that make you think of cancer. Weight loss, elevated CA-19-9 are just two of the findings. And another finding often is jaundice. In this elderly patient with an acute abdomen, what's the best diagnosis? Well, you see air within the portal venous system. You got to be thinking about ischemia and infarction. Yes, you can get portal venous air if you have certain procedures or biopsies, but then you scan down to the pelvis and you see extensive pneumatosis in the small bowel in a pattern that really is suggestive of ischemic bowel and infarcted bowel. ACE inhibitor use, you should get thickened edematous bowel. This is not a case of malrotation. It's not a case of Crohn's disease. You rarely ever see air in Crohn's unless you have ischemia. This is a beautiful example of transmural gangrenous necrosis of the small bowel with portal venous air due to infarction of the patient's bowel. In this patient with abdominal pain, what's the most likely diagnosis? Well, let's look at the images. I see multiple masses in the root of the mesentery on the axial and coronal view, and they're cystic. Now, I could think about lymphoma. That gives you mesenteric masses, but they're usually solid unless the patient's been treated. I can think about Crohn's disease, but again, you get multiple nodes, usually not conglomerate nodes, and I don't see any disease of the small bowel that suggests Crohn's. Sclerosis mesenteritis is always a good thought of a mesenteric mass, but usually it's solid, and in 70% of the cases, you have calcification. So the cystic part bothers me. Then you say to yourself, what gives you cystic nodes in the mesentery? And that's MAI. MAI is classic for giving nodes in the mesentery, but especially cystic nodes can cause some retraction of bowel nearby. But this was a great example of MAI, just a very nice case. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, you see a large mass that's abutting or coming from the stomach. When you look at it a bit more carefully, you recognize that it's not lymphoma. Lymphoma tends not to be that exophytic. It's not a carcinoid tumor next to the stomach. Those would be vascular. And melanoma is something to consider, but I don't see any other sign of malignancy. This mass is coming off the stomach. It's somewhat vascular. This is a beautiful example of a gastric gist tumor. So gastric gist tumor is your answer. The most likely diagnosis in the 50-ish year old female is, well, what do I see? I see a complex cystic lesion with septations. It's large, is in the region and body and tail of pancreas. Liver and spleen look okay. 
It's not an IPMN, it's too large. If it was an IPMN, it would have malignant transformation. I could think about a serous cystadenoma, patients are typically 70. I could think about a spent tumor, patients are typically 20, because both of those lesions are cystic and spent has a real range of appearances. Serous cystadenoma would be less likely here, but I guess I would have to think about it. But the classic location based on body tail, cystic lesion, large, and septations is a mucinous cystic neoplasm. And again, this is a tough case, but I would have picked an MCN and this lesion would have been resected. Remember, MCNs are always pre-malignant. So with that, I've now shown you 10 terrific cases. I hope you learned something from the cases and we'll see you next month. Have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.